While we think of it as a way to seal up wine bottles, there is no stopping cork. The spongy material can be a replacement for plastics and is used as a building material and even as a component in spacecraft. The world's main cork forests ring the Mediterranean across southern Europe and northern Africa. Portugal has the most cork trees in the world. Remy Innocencio shows us how cork's next job might be to save the world. Forza. Forza. Strength. One, two, three. See? Okay. <laughs> Off the tip of an axe. This is how that cork stopper from your bottle of wine probably got its start. Quem gosta faz por gosto. You only do this if you love it, says Casimiro Mileiros. And he's been loving it for the past 20 years, stripping cork bark off Portugal's national tree like thousands of seasonal harvesters every summer, waking at 4 a.m. each day and working the country's rolling historic Montado landscape. No tree is ever cut down, which means cork forests are massive natural carbon sinks. Bark can only legally be harvested again after nine years of regrowth. It takes 25 years for the first cork to even be harvested, and that is reflected in Portuguese society. There's a popular saying that says, if you care about your grandchildren, basically, if you care about your future, then you plant a cork tree. You have really the, the heart and soul of this business so far. Which Antonio is, uh, Rios Amarim is CEO of the world's biggest maker of cork stoppers. Amarim Cork punches out more than 5 billion stoppers each year, exporting to more than 100 countries. I wonder if anyone has ever called you the king of cork. I don't think so. I think you're probably the first one. <laughs> I'm just inheriting uh, a huge legacy from a family that for the last 154 years has been dedicating itself to cork. Amarim's cork dynasty started in 1870 when his great-grandfather, Antonio Alves Amarim, founded a small factory in Portugal's port wine region. Four generations later, production has modernized with machine learning speeding up cuts. But humans, this short line of cork stopper punch masters, are still the best, most efficient in the business. And what's so great is that the cork that's left behind does not go to waste. That's about 70% of it. And that is where the design and the innovation come in. All that leftover bark is ground into granules or pulverized into even finer powder. Different densities for different future products then wound into wheels or consolidated into cubes. Frankly, let's be honest, if you can stop waste and instead make money off of it, exactly. why not? Exactly. And that's what you're doing here. Eduardo Suarez is Amarim's chief of innovation, thinking up ways for the world to replace plastics and other textiles on land with shoes and sporting turf. It dampens and absorbs the vibration. At sea with surfboards and ships. And liftoff of space. And even in space, because it also insulates against temperature. It absorbs heat from the moment that the launcher goes into space. And now with Elon Musk's SpaceX and the Mars rover missions. It okay. burns, but it doesn't it burn burns. away. It doesn't burn away. It's an ablative material. It's a shield. And this block of hot black cork is an idea of what happens at Solfaca, another family-run company founded nearly a century ago. Over your decade. For CEO Paulo Estrada, this cork canyon is his business yeah. backyard. <laughs> the cork that's not perfect for stoppers is in fact perfect for Solfaca. It's chopped and cooked at high heat and high pressure. Cork granules expand like popcorn. The natural resin, that is... This, is... this is a popcorn maker. This is a popcorn. But for cork. For cork, yes. Solfaca sells most as organic insulation. Okay. How much but more expensive? Could be twice or even more. <laughs> but it's forever, it's for your sons, your grandsons. Like sound dampening wall coverings cut by computers for homes and offices. And furniture anchored to the earth. Architects have built award-winning homes across the US and Europe. Hotels, churches, and businesses are experimenting even more with cork. Do you envision every single home eventually using cork? Yes, but with a problem. What's that? We are limited with the forest. How can we make cork grow faster? 
Amarim is now researching how to first harvest cork after 10 years instead of the usual 25. Those first saplings have just been planted. Can cork save the world? I believe it can. It means that we're going to have to plant a lot more cork trees, which at the end of the day will make us live in a much better world. That admittedly will take time, something which Milerus has learned to respect working with cork through his life. Cultivating cork trees, you learn to cultivate patience, he says, and an appreciation for the generosity of this giving tree and its potential for a more sustainable future. For CBS Saturday Morning, Remy Inocencio, deep in the cork forests of Portugal. That is fascinating. Did you know all of the uses Did not. for cork? Nope, nope. Did Me not. either. Did not know that. And plant more trees. Yeah, well. Good for the environment, good for the cork industry. There it is. Like it.